If you've gone down the astrophotography rabbit hole on the internet and you've seen videos of us using all this sophisticated equipment and you're wondering what in the world does all this stuff do, don't worry, I'm here to clear it up for you as simply as I can, so let's get right to it. Let's kick things off by talking about the most important component of an astrophotographer setup and that's gonna be the mount. The mount is responsible for accurately tracking the object that you're trying to view or photograph as it seemingly moves across the night sky. It's very important that tracking be as accurate as possible, especially if you're doing astrophotography because there is very little room for error. So if you're just starting out with this hobby, I highly recommend that you put emphasis on getting a quality mount before anything else. Next, we're gonna look at this device here, this awkward thing that looks like a red can. This is actually a dedicated astronomy camera built exclusively for the purpose of astrophotography. This type of camera looks nothing like a typical camera because it has to be lightweight and produce less heat. This is why in place of an LCD screen you'll find a cooling system instead. The cooling system lowers the camera's temperature to match the ambient environment or even lower. This greatly reduces heat which also helps reduce unwanted noise or grain in a photo. In front of the camera you're gonna see something that looks like a machine gun magazine but it's an electronic filter wheel. Since my camera shoots monochrome and doesn't produce any colors, I have to shoot my exposures through several different kinds of filters so I'm able to colorize my images during editing. The six most common filters that most of us use are red, green, blue, hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and sulfur 2. Those last three filters specifically collect light from only those elements. These are known as narrowband filters and are hugely beneficial for astrophotographers shooting under light polluted skies. This little red box here is an electronic autofocuser and you're probably wondering why would I need an electronic autofocuser if focusing a telescope is so easy to do manually. While this is true, an EAF is enormously helpful because the glass elements inside a telescope expand or contract as the temperature changes throughout the night, and that expansion and contraction causes the telescope to drift out of focus. So I have my EAF set up to refocus my telescope when the temperature changes by 2 degrees or when the electronic filter wheel switches to a different filter because different filters also require different focus. Above the EAF, we have a smaller scope and a smaller camera. This is known as a guiding camera and it only has one purpose. To find at least one star, lock onto it, and track it. Although modern mounts are excellent at tracking the movement of the night sky, there's still room for error. The guiding camera tracks at least one star and records exactly where that star is located in the camera's frame. If the stars drift even one pixel in any direction within the frame, the guiding camera sends a signal to the mount so that it corrects its tracking. The corrections are extremely small, but the benefits are huge because it allows us to take much longer exposures during the night, resulting in sharper, cleaner images. Next to the guiding camera, we have what in my opinion is one of the best advancements in astrophotography technology in the last few years. You'll hear this referred to as either a wireless controller or a wireless module or a mini PC. As of this recording, the most popular wireless controller is the ZWO ASI Air Plus. Using my smartphone or tablet, it allows me to remotely control everything I've described so far. The ASI Air app helps me properly align my mount and recommends the best objects to observe or image for the present night. It even allows me to plan imaging sessions ahead of time by allowing me to pick a target, when to start and stop taking photos, which filters to use, and how long each photo exposure should be, among other things. Finally, we're gonna talk about the one component that most people are familiar with, and that's gonna be the telescope itself. We often refer to it as the Optical Tube Assembly, or OTA. And there are several different kinds that you can use for astrophotography. Me, coming from a photographer's background, prefer an apochromatic refractor telescope because it most closely resembles the structure of a camera lens. They are easy to use, they produce beautiful imagery, they can be quite budget friendly, and they're great for beginners because they require minimal maintenance. There you have it y'all, a relatively basic explanation of the most common components used by astrophotographers in the community. If you like this sort of content, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media, and until then, we'll see you next time and thank you for watching. Clear skies.